you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Welcome back everybody, it is Bulldog here. This is video number two in the series. We are looking at starter guy or starter decks to build for Splinterlands. We covered life yesterday. Today is death. I'll try to run through our intro a little bit quicker this time. Essentially, essentially what I'm doing is trying to build a deck that can go compete in Silver League ranked play for under $100. So I've broke this down into five different videos, one for each, each element. And I like to have three different elements when I'm building up a new deck. You can certainly do it with less, but for this, we're gonna look, I would recommend choosing three different elements. So each one of these is going to be approximately 30 to $35. So if you can go choose, you can go choose any three, put them together, you'll get a, a complete deck that's got a little bit of versatility and can go compete in Silver League for under $100. So let's uh, let's look at what we've got here with uh, with death. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go pull up. Here are Here is my, Here's my list that I've put together. What got my shopping cart, went out, and this is what this is what I've put together. So let's let's take a, a look at it. And again, I said compete in silver. These are going to be bronze level cards because we have a only a level two Thaddeus here. Level two Thaddeus is a level two chaos summoner, basically the cheapest cheapest summoner that you can go out and and get. But even though these are bronze level cards, they can compete in silver, at least at this current time. Now, uh, again, who knows what the game's gonna look like if you're watching this video months from now, but at the current time, that was that was the goal. So here's what here's what we're putting, putting together. So Thaddeus level two, we've got one of the cards I like the best here is Harkall. Harkall's a very underrated, underrated legendary reward card because it's an imprint reward card it's much cheaper than uh, it's much cheaper than you expect to be honest based on based on its performance thaddeus gives minus one magic harkal then has a shield so it, it kind of it's a very versatile tank that'll help you against any type of any type of attack thaddeus is helping with the magic so then the shield helps against melee attacks range attacks give you and gives you a nice little balance it's a very nice tank the other big tank is curse wind uh Windicu, and he's he's got he's got thorns i really wish we could level him up a little bit just didn't quite have enough for the budget we were really stretching the budget here so if you've got a little bit more again this is the budget i've set together is basically a, is a somewhat rain it's an arbitrary amount so nobody's gonna have this exact budget. So if you got a little more, adding that that uh, Windicu could be could be a nice option. But he can be a nice tank as well. Revealer is another reward card that I feel like is very underrated. It's one of the only bronze cards that has stun, so that'll give you give you a stun, which can be very nice. We've added in the Corpse Fiend. Those Fiends zero mana cards are so so good. I know that's taking up a huge chunk of our budget, but. I highly, I highly recommend going out and pick, picking up some fiends if you can. And remember, you do not have to buy all these cards. You can certainly rent them. In fact, I recommend renting first. Definitely recommend picking up some rentals first. Find out which cards you like. Go go rent all five of these, these starter decks that I'm putting together and see which ones you like the best, which ones you use the most, which cards you use, and then go out and start buying the cards that you use the most of. So we've got, we can do a little bit of a sneak team with this death starter deck and you'll see some of these teams here in, in just a second. But Silent Chevy is one of the best bronze cards out there. That level three Silent Chevy has has outstanding stats to, to go with the, with, um, with its sneak attack. You can pair it with Undead Badger, who's another sneak card that's very, very fast. So a fast sneak and then Chevy, those can, those can be paired really well together. I like throwing together a snipe team. So Magi Necrosi is a is a great card. And then pairing, uh, pairing that with Death Elemental. Death Elemental, again, is kind of an expensive card, but that snipe, the, the double magic snipe with Death Elemental and Magi Necrosi with Thaddeus decreasing the the health by one, you can pick. You can really pick off some cards there, and I really, really like that team. So even though Death Elemental is a little expensive as well, I did put him in, put him in there because I, I, I do really like that combo. And then you've got, actually got some really good range attack. We saw with Life that we were trying to build a range team because Life, the Life Summoner gives plus one range here, right? You don't necessarily get plus one range, but with Soul Strangler, um, with Soul Storm with your stalker there you can get some nice ranged attacks in that can that can work very well uraeus i didn't even mention with the sneak team that's a great neutral sneak card that is going to make a lot of these lists because it's just so good absolutely love that love that card so anyways let's go let's go look at some actual battles shall we let's pull them up here let's start with 
I'm sorry, let's let's start with our, our, our little bit of a ranged group here. So, and you can see this is one of the most common teams at the bottom. An Obsidian Magic team with Unicorn Mustang up front is a very common team that you will face. Adding a lot of range damage ends up being a, a pretty solid counter there. And this Life Sapper. So this, uh, this Life Leech is a card that I, or is an ability that I really like at the lower levels. I feel like it's more powerful at the, at the lower levels because that extra one health that you get, and you'll actually, you'll really see it shown off here in one of, the, one of these other battles. But that extra one health you get can be a, a really big deal. And Life Leech gives you half of your health Back, half the damage you deal back in health rounded up. So it's only doing one damage, but it still gets back one health because that, that gets rounded up. So as you as you level up and kind of increase that magic damage, even if you go up to two magic damage, you're still only getting one life leech back. So it, it's very powerful on those lower level cards where that, that kind of gets rounded up and that one health can make a very big difference. So I like those life leech cards too. Here's another one. This is a, we're gonna show off both the sneak and the snipe in the same battle. Lama Kron is unbeatable down at bronze, right? You can't beat that Lama Kron. This team you can. I like the, again, you've got a, you've got an undead badger is, is fairly fast even at level one for only two mana. Silent Chavis got three sneak attack for only five mana. And then again, has decent speed and health to go with it. So it can deal a decent amount of damage. You've got your double snipe cards that can take out now here we weren't able to take out Dr. Blight because he's got camo, but we're able to take out Obsidian quickly. A lot of times there's some weaker cards there. And then the Snipe plus the Sneak combined to take out Kron before he ever got to last stand. So they ended, the Snipe and the Sneak, Snipe and Sneak, that's a, a tongue twister, ended up uh, kind of working together there and targeting the same same card. So, so that was kind of nice. And death can be very good in these low mana matchups too as well you see when this windaku is a very very common card in these 12 13 mana battles as is again we're gonna see that that life sapper here and how powerful just adding just adding that one health each time now we had the void armor so it wasn't able it only works when it damages health it doesn't work when it damages armor so that was a, a little different here it's not adding quite as much health as as normal there's a limited amount of battles i could find guys i i just searched through a lot of battles to find these so i couldn't find the the perfect one but then you get down to this point where life sapper is adding up all this health and then he's gaining as, as much health as he's as he's losing at this point here at the very end Get that life leech and becomes almost indestructible. Again, that, that one extra health each turn can be huge down in bronze, even, even in silver as well. So uh, some abilities that I really, really like, and I like the versatility of this death team. A lot of people think, uh, a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm, I only want to run Thaddeus if I feel like the other team is running magic because you've got that minus one magic. And that, and that is, it is certainly better. Thaddeus is certainly better if the other team is, is running magic and you can kind of counter that a little bit. But it's not a necessity either. That minus one health can still be can, can be still be a, a very solid debuff. And then you've got a lot of different lineups you can run with, with death. Like I said, you can go ranged, you can go magic with those life leech, you can go with uh, with some sneak, you can go with snipe. There, there's a lot of different different things. You can start to add some more legendary cards if you want to expand on top of this and do even do even more things. So I know a lot of people do not like death, but death has been death has been one of my favorite ones. And when I'm building out some of these new accounts, this is one of this is one of the teams that I that I actually go with. I, I do use death because I, I like it. I like it quite a bit and feels like I feel like it can adjust to whatever the rule set is very, very well. Some of these, some of these summoner, these three of the chaos of the chaos summoners give plus one attack. So you've got plus one ranged with life. You've got uh, earth that's plus one magic, and then you've got fire that's plus one melee. Those can be very, very powerful, and they they certainly are very good. But they also lose a little bit of flexibility, and sometimes it's not okay. You build a life deck and. But then the, the rule set doesn't favor using ranged attack or whatever the case is. So I feel like death and water have a little more flexibility and I like building those out because of because of that flexibility. So they, they tend to be some of my choices. But anyways, we're gonna go through all five. We are only halfway through, not even halfway through. We're only through two of the five. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on so you get notified the next three days as these videos come out. 
Let me know in the comments below. What cards do you think I meant? What cards in here do you not like that you think maybe I shouldn't have added in? Which ones did I did I leave out that I should have put in there? Which which of the splinters are your favorite? Is death one that you're choosing? If you're if you're building, if you're starting a new account and you're choosing three elements to work on, is death one that you're picking? I want to know what you guys thought. I want to know how you think I did. So let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks a ton.